everyone, welcome inside the Red Earth Production Studios for this edition of YBM Cast, powered by Game 7 Baseball, Game7Baseball.com. Hey, it's that time of year. I hope your team is registered. I hope you're ready for some spring baseball. Get your team set up, ready to go. Game 7 Baseball's got it all. They got some turf over there in Warrington. They got some turf down there at Lake of the Ozarks. They got some turf over there at Ballparks of America. They got some turf over in Edwardsville, Illinois. I mean, it's everywhere. Get your team registered. Tell uh, Dave and Dave that Brian sent you, and let's have some fun. We got some great dates coming up. Youth Baseball Midwest will be out at some great venues with Game 7 Baseball this spring and summer. So, culminating with the World Series, of course. So, let's have some fun. We'll see you at the ballpark. Game7Baseball.com Today, we got some Legion Baseball talk, and joining me on the show is Mr. Jason Rakers, or Rockers. Or Rockers. If you want to make my grandpa happy, we'll go by Rockers, but uh, Rakers is fine, too. You know, when, I'm, <laughs> when I used to hit well, you know, rake, raking was good, but no, Rockers, uh, grandpa would like Rockers, but we're good. Uh, he is the director of the Aviston American Legion Baseball Club in Illinois there. Uh, the Aviston Express. Throw that throw that logo up there, Jason. There it is. It's a good look, too. I like that. Well trained. Go the train. Exp- the Express, man. Um, you guys. <laughs> yeah, that's that was good. more of a tugboat. Unfortunately, that was not a train. But we do have a full-fledged train when we score a run that goes off. It's, it's, do you it's really? legit. Oh, That's heck yeah. Sweet. I but that. all the locals love to hear the train go. The train, actually, the train tracks that are right outside right field, uh, they went uh, silent about six, seven years ago. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we used to hate that train noise. Now we miss it a little bit. So now the baseball team brings it back. There you go. Do you guys uh, – Tell, tell the folks if, you know, some of these folks, I, I'm not sure. I had to look it up on a map. Where is that? Aviston. Aviston. Another, uh, Oh my God. Correction. I'm, oh, I'm good. struggling hey. all night. <laughs> hey, when, I, when I was playing baseball on the minors back in the day, I was Jason Rakers from Aviston. So I get it. I've been, I've been hearing it for a long time, but <laughs> Aviston is 35 miles. If you walked across the river, straight line from the arch, You'd be 35 miles straight. My my family farm, I mean, you'd, you'd run right into it. So it's just a little bit past O'Fallon, Illinois, and uh, Lebanon. You're, you're, you're between O'Fallon and Carlisle Lake. So okay, one of the first one of the first small towns outside of St. Louis. I got you. In the Metro East. Very good. So, yeah. Do you have – so let's start with this. I, I got to get my glasses back on cause I can't see. And I, I, we may even just start over and get all the names right here. This is ridiculous. Some people's <laughs> children, I swear, man. But, um, you've, uh, 2022, you guys won the state championship over there. Um, and I want to talk to you a little bit about, you know, building a Legion program. You know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of back and forth. You know, club baseball, this that. I I'm I'm the type mm-hmm. of person. I don't think any baseball's bad. I don't care. It's still a club. I mean, to me, American Legion baseball is still club baseball because it's no different. You got freshman, you got uh, uh, junior, you got senior baseball, or A, double A, triple A. However, people right. want to express it. I still think it's club baseball because you guys are working to develop these kids, prepare them for high school, prepare them for college. Uh, so it's not really different, is it? Nothing's different. It doesn't, you know, I'm a, I'm a principal of a school and whatever organization you're running is all about how well you run it, how organized you are, how you communicate your message and whether you're the, uh, 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 you know, major select baseball program in the St. Louis area or Chicago or you're a Legion team, it comes down to um, the details and, and, you know, passion, love of game, uh, communication, whatever you're doing. Uh, so, it, it, you know, everything in life has a pendulum, and the pendulum, I, I believe, is swinging back to Legion just because there has been a lot of money grab in baseball, and Legion has never been that, and that's what's special about Legion. It's always been about the code. 
uh, more we ball than me ball, I always say. Mm -hmm. um, and that's no knock on on the other programs. There's a lot of great select baseball programs out there and people sure. leading it. Sure. Not really a knock on them at all. But uh, I'm a big fan of, of America, giving people a chance and, you know, to play in front of grandpa in a small town like Avison instead of traveling to Omaha one weekend, Indy the next weekend. You can learn a lot with a conversation with grandpa after a ball game that you can't learn traveling to Kansas City for a weekend for a PBR tournament. And uh, that, that's what I like about Legion Baseball. It does that, that code means something. So you're not just getting, you know, you, you can get the exposure you want through Legion. You can get it through select ball, but I know for a fact you can get it at one, post one, two, three, nine in Aveson, Illinois. Uh, we, you know, our team, we, we've got, we've got 11 or 12 guys from that one team and almost all of them lived in Aveson playing collegiate baseball right now. And, and I was pretty fortunate. I was lucky. My son was on that team and we just kind of developed talent from second grade on up and it worked out and, you know, we, I worked hard to not burn them out, you know, to, to work well with the basketball coaches, the football coaches and share, share the kids let them have Christmas, let them have Easter, let them be kids. Um, those are things I think a lot of coaches are, are really missing, dropping the ball, not letting kids be kids from time to time and get away from the sport. I think there's a lot of that conversation. I know I hear it on my end, uh, Jason, because I think there's some, there's some things coming back around to that, I think across the board, because there has to be a point where, you know, it's a sport, it's fun, if you've got a kid, and and I think this is basically what it boils down to. If you've got a kid who wants to practice, I don't care. Okay, fantastic. Let, we'll let you practice. If there's a kid who goes, no, nah, you know, Mom, I, I'm good. Can we shut it down for a couple of weeks? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Go, you know, go play with your friends. Go do whatever. Uh, you know, having conversations with the athletes and understanding the personality of the athletes so that you know what how to – help that per that particular uh, player continue to grow. I think that's what sometimes we lack. We try and throw everybody in the same thing. We got to do this. We got not every, not yeah. all these kids are the same. No, there's not one swing out there. There's not one arm action out there. There is uh, every kid's different, you know, to get that, you know, that kid that's a little better at basketball than baseball, but yet makes you a whole lot better team, even though he's hitting in the, him hitting the seven hole as a true athlete is a whole lot better than most of our other options in the seven or eight hole. <laughs> so uh, working with, you know, and I've always said that, uh, you know, if you're, you're, if you want to play football and that's your number one, you know, I'll share you in the summer. If your team's good with it, if you're a good teammate when you're here, same thing, you know, same thing for a kid that's better at basketball. Absolutely. You got to summer is all about sharing and the kids are, uh, you know, they're real perceptive. They know, uh, you know, if you've got their interest, at heart and uh, you're willing to share them for the right reasons. Sometimes you got to be tough though. Like, Hey, you need to be there this weekend. I told the kids too, that uh, not last summer, but the summer before when we won the tournament, I, I said, you know, I'm going to be really flexible with your schedules, but if you're not there for the playoffs, just walk right out that door. This is what we're doing. I'm sorry. That, that's going to be crunch time for us. I'm giving up my whole summer. I need you to give me up uh, two to three weeks, you know, Lord willing, we can play this for three or four weeks, but you know, that's, totally a, that's a fair thing. I think that's fair. And, you know, I, I've been, I, and, and you can say we can all go, oh, no, yeah. I mean, I've been guilty of some of those things and being this way. But, you know, as you watch, as, as we got older and whatnot, parents, you know, at, especially at the end of the long summer, man, it's nice to go to the lake, yeah. you know, take a weekend it's, it's at essential. summertime, right? It's essential to go to the lake. If that's what your family does. No, if you're going to do it every weekend, then we got a problem. But, uh, you know, that itch has got to be scratched. And uh, it's important. That, that kid, kid's going to play a whole lot better if he gets his one weekend with uh, mom and dad and the cousins at the lake. He's going to come back swinging. Exactly. So this area back here is basically production. Um, they do a lot of the artwork back here. They do the production. So any of that stuff that comes in off of, we'll say, our fanware stores, stuff that comes in off the team stores, a lot of the coaches wear, a lot of the last minute, hey, we got to have it in the next 10 minutes stuff, that all comes back here. This area is where all the day-to-day -day stuff that comes in really goes through. The retail store is its own little entity. This is where the real work is done.
the one thing I wanted to come back to here, where you know, evidently you uh, you played Legion baseball. Mm-hmm. What got you back in, and what what brought you into the coaching aspect, and how long have you been doing it, Jason? Well, um, yeah, I played ba- Legion baseball, and had it was the best baseball I I ever played. You know, just for pure joy and passion. Uh, high school was fine. College was awesome. Um, professional baseball was awesome, but uh, Legion baseball was the best, uh, you know, and, I, and I'm sure that had a lot to do with the special cast of characters that I was playing ball with, but I think it had more to do with, uh, that was the, you know, the, those were kids that really loved baseball and they were wanting to play at the next level and, and boy, were we working hard and having fun at the same time and, you know, being kids and, and, uh, but that passion, you know, after I finished playing professional baseball, you know, coming back to my hometown, I wanted to give back. And I, I, I always knew that if baseball didn't pay the bills, education would be my route. And so I've just always loved baseball and wanted to see, uh, our local, local team uh, thrive and do well. And a lot of people wanted me to be involved and I, you know, I was obliged. I felt honored to be given that trust. Uh, to people's kids. So started the program. Actually, actually our program in our, in our community, we have two high schools that uh, have a passionate, probably dislike for one another's, uh, you know, I like it, that. It, it's a Boston, it's a Boston, you know, Red Sox, New York Yankees relationship, the mutual respect, but, uh, and uh, believe it or not, you know, that, that uh, blue from one school and purple from the other school that, they get together from the summer and they, they wear green and they just love each other. And it's pretty special to see uh, two, two uh, rivals get together and uh, in harmony play baseball together. So it's, it's been great. That's cool stuff. Cause, and I think that does develop a respect, uh, for, you know, because you're battling through the, the springtime in high school yeah, you know, and you know that guy, and you go, "Hey, man, I'm a, I'm taking you down. You're not gonna get a hit on me." And then in the summertime, you know, I told you I was gonna get you, bro. Yeah, right. <laughs> and they, yeah, fun with that. And they do, you know, they 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 uh, battle like heck against each other, and then they battle together, and uh, it's it's been it's been great. It's been That's- really good for the high school rivalry to put that aside for a little bit, and uh, it really does heal some wounds most of them are not real but sometimes it does get ugly and uh and the legion uh program does a good job of healing those wounds in aviston so aviston and what's the other uh other uh school well the, the high school is modern day high school and uh, breeze central so uh, those are you know, breeze central is about three miles down the road and modern day's five miles down the road and uh those are those, yeah, those Bree Central is our host school. That's our Legion post, but uh, modern days within our boundaries. And th- that's where we get 99.9% of our players, those two schools. Oh, wow. Very good. Talk a little bit about um, what's coming up for you guys next year. Uh, last year, you were there um, to, you know, at the All Star game. I thought it was a great setting, but what is it? What what does it take to continue to grow Legion baseball in the current? Because baseball's changed some, you know, and yeah, what we've seen and how we've done. Yeah, the the way we go about things. How does how does American Legion baseball? What does it take to stay in that moment and stay in that place? Well, Legion baseball has got to grow with the times. Um, I think, uh, you know, select baseball has gone too far to the analytics and to the analytics. We'll just leave it at that. Analytics, okay. analytics, analytics. Um, I think the healthy thing that uh, Legion does is, or what Legion needs to do is join with the times, bring analytics and get analytics involved. Sure. If you're not doing analytics, you're probably doing it wrong. Uh, but you also need to use the eye test. You also need to get the reps in. You also need to just get to the T work. Uh, we need to join in on Twitter. We need to join in on Facebook. We got to do the things, um, 
that these big programs are doing to to promote their players to get them seen it's free your twitter's free if you're not promoting your program uh, that's easy and baseball's twitter uh yeah if you're a young man uh, whether you're on legion or or a different program you need to have your twitter and uh you need to have a good uh you be making good decisions online. That goes for all the avenues of social media. You hearing me, kids? Social media is real important. But uh, Twitter, you know, our Legion program, I think it's one of the reasons we do well. We get our talent to come out and play for us because we are. The newspapers aren't showing up like they used to, sadly. And so we're promote every game gets, gets shared, uh, top stats. Uh, we're showing highlights. Uh, we're promoting, and, and Legion's growing, too. One thing I've worked with Don Wallace, I've been very fortunate that he's let me push the envelope a little bit and change what we've been doing. And, you know, Don, I, you know, I talked to Don about the uh, all-star getting an all-star game also uh, getting PBR events. We're doing that this year in the Twitter. He's let me take charge of the Illinois Twitter. And uh, so, I, you know, having uh, programs, I'm encouraging programs in Illinois and even Missouri. We've been in, in cahoots with obviously Missouri a lot, sharing a lot of uh, the similar posts, promoting the history of Legion. That's one of our best parts too. But if you're only holding on to history, you're going to die. You got to, you got to grow with the, the future. So we got to hold on to our history, but grow, use analytics in, you know, old school and new school, mix the two together. And I think you get with the code and you got a good thing going. I, and I, I agree with you. His, the history is great. And you know, it's, it's interesting because I see a lot of stuff come from the, the national site um on twitter on facebook they they promote those things but a lot of it is yogi Berra or uh johnny bench you know and, and yeah great names i mean these are hall of fame guys and things like that and whatnot but there has to be this place they did this with Corey seager i thought was great uh you saw Corey mm-hmm. seager's face here north carolina played for uh, some american legion there in north carolina that's the thing that resonates with the kids today in that respect. And you do have to have, but there has to be that thing that keeps it current with the current crowd. Where are these kids today? And there are kids going to play ball. I saw some really great baseball. I got, I was fortunate to, I got to call uh, the games that we live streamed through uh, St. Louis sports production, the state championships. And it was a really great tournament. It's really high level baseball. A lot of kids going on to play college baseball, and, but nobody is talking about that. And that's that's the hope here. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing this as well, because I saw so many good ball players. And you know, on mm-hmm. your side, on the Illinois side, I want to be able to do that as well because it's all still just baseball. And no matter where yeah. you play, most of the kids they have an end goal to something. They want to get to a certain place, not all of them, and that's okay. But yeah. to those players who want to go, uh, go as far as they can, and like you said, Jason, when we're when you're done playing ball at some point, how do you come back into the community? Where do you fit, and how can you uh, make an impact in the next generation? Right. Absolutely, and our, our communities are a lot better place when our kids are playing ball at eight o'clock on a. Friday night instead of other things, um, you know, yes, we all know exactly. that that's, that's the key to parenting, keeping your kids, uh, hanging with the right crowd, keeping them active, making good choices uh, and, and Legion baseball and, and whatever it, it may be. Basketball is the same way, whatever your sport is, if, maybe that's drama, uh, golf, whatever you like doing the band, mm-hmm. you know, that's important to stay active, but yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that that I agree with you. The Legion baseball and, and Legion baseball has lost the prior to the last two or three years. It was really falling off and not staying with the times. And that's why. Well, I mean, you probably don't have as many major leaguers that are Legion alum. Right. But I think that's going to start trending back. You know, and you know, Hall of Famer Joe Maurer just went in. He was a a Legion alum, and it's it's they're, it, they're still it's more still- of them probably were Legion alum than not in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. But uh, we got to change with the times, and yeah. uh, and that that's the key. But it, but it is nice, like you pointed out. Not all kids want to play college, and that's important to note too. Uh, but it saddens me 
but there's a lot of kids that just want to play baseball with their buddies when they're 16, 17, 18. And, and uh, yeah, we had, we had, we were lucky. We had some great players, great humans like that on our state winning team two years ago that accepted their role and they were just tickled to be on that team. And they got plenty of time because we did wall up some teams along the way too, but, but they were great. And, and they're just as much a, a part of that team uh, as anybody, because they handled the role, you know, nothing's worse than when you have a guy on the bench complaining the whole season that really tears, tears teams down. Well, shoot last year, you guys were fourth place, but you had a 25 and three record, man, only three losses. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, we've had, a, we've had a good run. Uh, we, we, again, if we just keep getting our players to come out, the key is getting them to keep coming out and, and mm-hmm. uh, not, you know, I'm not saying drinking the Kool-Aid, but drinking the Kool-Aid and to drive 45 minutes to an hour to uh, play somewhere else where, you know, we play those teams too. We're not afraid to play anyone. That's uh, the, the, we'll, we'll play anyone anywhere. And, uh, but you know, we, we weeknights we're playing games close to home and about every other weekend we do a little bit of traveling to make sure and we do, we do tell our kids too, we're going to get you some exposure. We're going to do a couple of, we went to Omaha that summer, two summers ago, and uh, did a PBR event in Kansas City. So we're doing some things to see some um, competition outside of Southern Illinois in the St. Louis region. You know, and I like that. And I work a lot with PBR, um, Kevin Mulder here in the state of Missouri. Mm-hmm. Um, we just did an event. Uh, I was very thankful. Andy Urban, who's over in the west side. Uh, we were in Kansas City this last weekend, actually, and uh, saw a lot of kids. And, you know, when you said, you know, it's not all – the analytics are there, I think, for the kids to understand where they're at as a player. If you're a sophomore and here's here's your numbers, how are you getting better? Because right. I talked to the instructors, the guys, the coaches that were there and whatnot, and they all know. It's like you said, I test and they'll, t- they'll say it. Well, it's great that he, you know, hit uh, 90 miles an hour off the bat. Yeah, it's he, velo. He fantastic. Ran. And they all say that. And then he goes, but now I will follow that kid over to the ballpark. I want to see him uh, barrel up the baseball in a game. And I want to, the eye test still has to happen because it's one thing to hit in a cage and you get the exit velo. Fantastic. Now I know you got good pop in your bat, but now do you have that same good pop in your bat? Are you barreling it up when the guy is throwing uh, 88 at you and has that wipeout slider? Right. Oh, absolutely. That uh, the eye test is more important to me. And, and that's actually, you know, you probably noticed some support in Linda, but that's one of the things I was excited about with my son. They were not, I mean, they use analytics. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're more into it this year than last year, but, I love the mix of both to know that uh, you're not just all in on just a number. Cause I, I've been to enough PBR events. I've, I've seen the, uh, the ground ball and the hole, the shortstop, the guy takes about 15 steps, uh, cr- uh, four crow hops and then throws it 30 feet over the first baseman's head. But, uh, on the radar, it said he threw 86. <laughs> yeah. And, and that, that, that's what matters. And they're doing the same thing with hitting off the tee to get their excellent exit velocity there. They're not taking their normal swing and they're wailing on as hard as they can just to get that magic number, which it's laughable to me because I played in a different era of baseball where that didn't matter. You know, batting average mattered more. And and Um, the thing of it is, is when you talk to the people who are running the events and doing those things, they understand all that. And they'll tell you, I, I, cause I deal with it. We're out there all the time. And the most impressive guys are the guys that, uh, in fact, it was funny because we were we were talking with Andy a little bit about this. He said one of the most impressive ones was this kid that averaged around, he hit like, I think, 98 at top velocity. But he said his whole, uh, his whole deal, he averaged 92 miles an hour off the bat. He says, that tells me he's barreling baseballs. He said it was just gap to gap, gap to gap, and he's watching that whole thing. 
he didn't he had one that was big but the rest were all in that same space just as you said right there and these guys understand this thought process and if you understand baseball you know you've got to be able to do that the numbers get sexy at times you know and 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 those are the things everybody goes ooh and ah about but i'm with you and i have this argument all the time fantastic that he throws 95 but he killed three fans and the mascot yeah ball four you know so yeah. the game you see a lot of t- <laughs> a lot of players a lot of players in the major leagues like right now is the most frustrating time i've ever watched major league baseball because i see so many analytics players and uh they're, they're just not really good baseball players but boy they do look good one out of their five at bats. Why like wow, did you see that? And then that play in the hole or that throw from center, like wow. And it's it's fair. It's wow. The potential yeah. there. They're not good baseball players. There's just a lot of the big big league baseball to me is as bad as it's ever been, but um but its talent's never been better too. Um uh, and they just like they're trying to hone that and get them consistent. I get that, but uh I don't know. I think I think uh you know, you see the teams that are winning the World Series are usually those that strike out the least, and 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 then sometimes the guys that hit the the home run. But it's usually those that get on base and those that walk the least. Uh, but I know there's a uh, there there's examples of uh, teams that strike out a lot that hit home runs and 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 get it done too. But uh, I don't know. I, I've always been a fan of putting the ball in play. I think uh, and. When, across the board, when you're talking, there has to be a balance. It's like you said, there always should be a balance to things and not, sw- you know, the pendulum swings here and everything's this way. No, mm-hmm. keep it right here. Right. Understand right. what you're looking at here. Understand what you're looking at here and let that be the evaluation of it. I, I think that's absolutely true because uh, we're going to be at uh, a PBR event in Illinois too with, uh, the Southern Illinois setting. So I'm looking forward to it. I love to see these kids. I love to talk to the kids. It's a lot of fun. Um, I'm hoping to, I want to, we'll be at the, the PBR event for Illinois. And uh, I, if you could real quick, talk a little bit about that. You know, this is just, or actually it's going to be at St. Louis university just for yeah. American Legion. Talk a little bit about that. What, what are you, how are you setting uh, the kids up for that? Well, we're, you know, we're promoting it a lot on our, obviously our Illinois Twitter on our, our team, Twitter and Facebook, uh, promoting the heck out of that. It, it's, it is really important to get that number. This, when you, when you have good, uh, bad speed and you have a good arm uh, the quickest way to get the whole world to know about it is to go to one PBR event. And it is somewhat costly. I don't know what the price is at now around 250 bucks, I think is is about the price tag, but it's the best money you'll ever spend if you have good numbers. Um, yeah. And that's the scary thing. If you don't have good numbers, it might be the worst money you ever spent. So I do advise kids to be realistic. And there's a lot of uh, lacking of realism out there in some in, in some avenues. And But if you go there and you're you know, a junior in high school and you're only throwing 71 mile an hour, you just made a great donation to uh, PBR. But if you're in the eighties, you, you got a shot, but you know, and, and it, it doesn't hurt really, but, uh, but you want to have your numbers decent. And, and I, it is a great way it, 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 in every coach from um, university of Hawaii to, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Vanderbilt and every university, you know, the coaches see those numbers. So if you throw 94 one time, the world knows about you in PBR, and this is a great exposure event uh, to go to uh, if, if you have the money in, in proximity to go there. So, yeah, I'm excited to, to see that happen. It's the first time PBR has worked with uh, Legion Baseball, and it's going to be a great event at SLU. So hopefully, and we're working, too, to try and get one up in the northern Illinois area, closer to Chicago, um, so that we can catch some of those kids up there and get them in, in a PBR event. But great event. that. That along with the All Star Game at Bush Stadium are just great promotional events, and we're hoping to do do more items like that to uh, entice people to to, to uh, realize that Legion baseball is about exposure and promotion. Not you know, good baseball plus the exposure is what we're trying to do. I always find to you know, 
as you said, you know, you got this young man who's, you know, throwing 71 to 75 or whatever the case, and he's a junior. Yeah, you, you might want to think of twice about those things. Yeah. And this is always something that uh, I, I like to have this conversation. I don't care if you're playing Legion ball, club ball, doesn't matter. And I'm sure you've had these conversations. You've been through this process uh, yourself being realistic and you've you're 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 doing this right now with these kids everybody i know it's easy to to go man i'd love to play d1 your son's at linwood it's a D, division one program at this point it this is only its second year in division one mm-hmm. um but jason there are so many good programs and uh junior colleges uh, Division two programs out here, especially between the two states. How do you help these kids understand that you don't have to always be at a Division one program to have a lot of success? Oh, uh, basically, baseball is baseball, and the same rules apply from the World Series down to Division three. And boy, um, teammates are, are just as goofy at Division one level as they are at the. Division two level, they're just as fun. The memories are just as good. Uh, and I, I, I can speak to it because I'm watching my son play Division one baseball. And last year they did a decent amount of losing. And that, that was hard at times. Um, I, I played at a high level Division two. I was fortunate enough. I had some offers to play at some Division ones, but I chose winning myself. Um, that's just the, way, the route I wanted to go. And I can tell Lindenwood's going to have a lot better year this year. Uh, I don't know how many wins that turns into, but I'll be surprised if they're not at or above 500. But, you know, each kid's got to know what they want, you know, and if you want the big glamorous school, it's a good chance you're going to sit the bench. If you want to, you know, a good division two, and there's some bad division twos where you can have a good time as well. Life, the, you know, the, Variety is the spice of life, and, and there's a college baseball program out there for everybody, and hopefully you can find one. And if you're looking for winning, you can find that. And if you're looking for to be on a team, you can find that as well. So, But there's nothing wrong. Juco, too, you know, especially yeah. if you're a hitter. And I, if, I can, if I'm talking to any seniors out there right now in this world, if you're a hitter, boy, is it hard right now when you've got these five- and six-year seniors to come out and be a hitter at a Division One level. I mean, I'm telling you, you've got to be a special Bryce Harper, Mike Trout-type player to uh, jump in front of guys that are 22 years old and uh, are in their adult man body. And while you're still, you know, growing, uh, that's a tough hill. But the Ju- there's nothing wrong with JUCO, and there's nothing wrong with uh, Division Three, Division Two, II, Division One. NEI, all those, it's, it's, it's fun baseball. And, uh, I encourage, you know, don't, don't narrow down to, if you're, if you're being recruited, you know, give everybody a listen, visit everywhere. You, you just never know. Cause it ultimately it's 99.9% of the time. It's about the job, the degree you're going to get at the end of that, that line. Uh, very few get the chance to, to play at Bush, uh, for real. And, uh, it usually comes down to that piece of paper. So get that piece of paper and have a little fun along the way. I love that. Yeah, because, you know, uh, you look just up not too far from you guys north there, uh, Quincy, uh, yeah. Division Two program that's having a lot of success right now. Absolutely. Yeah, they just went to the College World Series. I'm, I'm very proud alum of there. That's where uh, I was a Hawk. Great day to be a Hawk every day. So uh, I fell in love with that stadium. Uh, I fell in love with the coach there. He and I still t- talk often and uh that, that's the main reason i went there the head coach he he was he pat atwell is just uh tied for first on best human beings i've ever ever met and i could tell that and i just knew that was going to be a, a good experience there and that's what it is too you know um i had op- options to go to division one but i knew it was going to not it wasn't going to be like uh, the experience pat atwell could give me at quincy university so, and they're doing great things there right now. Some of our players from our Legion team are playing up there, and and I love keeping an eye on them as well. And that's where I met my wife. So we get to Quincy quite often. There you go. See, I didn't even know you went to Quincy. I, I had no clue, yeah. folks. So I yeah. just was throwing it because they are. They're, they're a solid Division yeah. two program. Um, across the way here, UCM. Uh, I mean, if you're in oh, that – Oh, gosh, yeah. If Ooh. you're in that teeter and you're getting talked to by UCM – 
I liked what you said. You know, I chose winning over. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, well, in Central Missouri, my goodness, they're, they're both them and Quincy are in it every year. They're in the top 20. And boy, that's fun. That's fun when you're uh, when you're doing that. You're getting a top 20 ranking. That's pretty hard to do at the Division One level. It's hard to get outside that that SEC. That's pretty tough nut to crack. You got to go over and uh, McKendry just hired a new head coach, Tim Gurdnow. And uh, I saw Tim play. He played with my son up at Hannibal LaGrange. Very good. That's 10 minutes down the road from us. Exactly. And uh, he, uh, heck of a good baseball player. Um, I really, I think he's going to be a a very good head coach. If, you know, if you ever get a chance to get over and meet him, that's probably good. I I think, you know, McKendry. I probably will. Yeah. Yeah, That's usually where I try to catch the Hawks. Since uh, McKendry joined the GLVC a couple years ago, that's a good opportunity for me to catch up with the, Went to University Hawks. It's a lot closer, road. too, huh? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. And a little bit warmer. You know, I know it's not a lot warmer, but Quincy, boy, it's another level of cold up there <laughs> on that river. Something. Oh, man. Legion Baseball, we talk about this. Uh, you're – what do you guys, you know, as as far as when you talk to kids about coming and playing, what do you say to them? What what, you know, how what do you play? How do you play? Where do you play? What is that thought process when you see a, if you have a kid that's kind of going, well, coach, uh, you know, I this club over here, they they gave me they they can give me a roster spot too. What what do you say? Well, our biggest draw is that we work with them. Uh, we do expect a commitment, but we do know that uh, it's not a total commitment because, heck, even as a coach, sometimes I've got to go to a wedding or I've got a life to do. Uh, we're very reasonable. Now, if you're going to miss because of a float trip, then, uh, you know, that, there's another program down the road you probably belong with. But we're very reasonable. Um, we, we're going to give them uh, great reps to get better. We're going to give them a, a great summer of fun. Uh, it's not going to be all work. And no play it's going to be a little bit of both and uh but but uh very flexible and, and that's and they know we we honestly you know the first few years when you start it they don't know and you really got to sell your program right now everybody knows what they're getting when they play for the Avison express they they know they're going to get a, a quality experience a quality schedule uh reasonable coaches uh, passionate coaches a passionate fan base uh, baseball in, under the lights um, my brother Dennis uh, is highly involved and in, in general manager actually right now. And you're going to get fireworks from time to time. I mean, you wouldn't talk about a, a state tournament. We put on a state tournament. We had it all. And my brother Dennis was quite, he was uh, the ringleader of all the festivities. And I mean, we had thousands of people at our state tournament. It was quite, quite amazing what we pulled off. Um, but we got a pretty passionate. I don't know what the official count was, but we had fans around the entire uh, facility stacked real deep. I mean, wow. real deep. It was pretty awesome. It, it, it's a memory I'll never forget. That's impressive. But, but you just got to keep building on that, keep promoting players, uh, stay with the times, and uh, give them a good product. They, by the end of the year, kids, kids do the talking. If at the end of the season they didn't uh, have a coach that worked with them, they didn't have a good experience, got yelled out, yeah, every time they struck out or made an error, you know, they're going to, they, they talk and, uh, and that goes both ways too. You know, we hear about kids too, that are me guys that, uh, that can ruin a summer. So it goes both ways, but they know what they're going to get. Uh, and I encourage that to all, you know, just put together a good schedule, be reasonable to kids and, uh, get a nice uniform too. kids like that too. Throw that nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> baby. Cherry yeah. on top is a nice uniform. If you look good, you play good, coach. That too. That never hurts. It never hurts. <laughs> it it's tough because I, I think sometimes um, you know, uh coaching has a lot to do with things. You evidently, of course, you played at a high level. Uh you've got people around you play out. What would you say to clubs, you know, some of the uh, smaller places and whatnot? How do they get those kids back? How do they find those play, those coaches? 
that are now going to be able to help develop these kids. That's the impossible. Uh, you know, I just can't, you know, we're, we're lucky. We just started, uh, I was involved in, and I'm currently still helping uh, a young man from Pinckneyville, Illinois, start a program. And they had it for many, many years, and they're bringing it back to life. He's bringing it back to life this year, and I'm excited to help them through the. Uh, it's a challenge to start a new program. You got to be patient. You got to be resilient. You got to be passionate. You got to be. Got to have supporters. You got to have some money to start things off. Um, I feel like you got to be on Twitter. You got to have a vision. And uh, year one's usually easy. Everybody's on board, and energetic. Year two, all of a sudden, the energy goes down a little bit, but you still but your energy better still be up there. Um, so it, it just it takes a, a patience and resilience. Uh, but but to, to find, you know, I don't know, like Belleville, Illinois has always been a historic right now. They don't have it. It blows my mind. I mean, I'm shocked that Belleville does not have a Legion program. Now you talk about a team that drove us nuts, you know, trying to beat. They were always the team to beat. And I remember the day, like yesterday, when we beat them. Um, but they don't have a program right now, and I think they'll come back soon. But you got to have a coach, and uh, that uh, once you get that, once you get a good coach, you you know. But but that's like I said earlier in the talk that that that's coaches uh, half the battle. And whether you're a select program or a legion program, it starts and ends with a, co a good coach. Um, but legion can can get you where you want to go now, and that's that's the message we need to sell at a at a reasonable rate in front of grandma and grandpa. And mom and dad and your friends in high school don't have to drive an hour and a half to play a game and get exposure. You can do that right in your backyard and uh, and get it done. Well, and I think it's important, you know, as you continue to develop, you got to, you know, you develop players to go to school, but they're all coming back. And you got to develop some of those kids that are going to come back. How do they give back into the community and develop that as they're going through the program? Hey, I think you'd make a great coach, right? Yep. And I, I think that's something that has to happen within Legion a little bit that way. Hey, if, if when you come back, if you're coming back, you come back in the summer, if you want, you know, to do this, can the, can the, and even if you're, you know, we're paying for your gas, we're doing this, whatever the case may be. And I understand it's a lot of it's volunteer and those things, but helping these kids in some way that way, get them back into the program and teaching yeah. them how they develop the next group and the next group. I think that's important. Oh, that is real important. And, and if you look at all the high school basketball coaches and baseball coaches, they're usually uh, one that had success in the past. They're usually an alum or a nearby alum, um, but they had success. And that, that that's the hard part. Our program has had success, and that's why we've been fortunate enough to be able to attract coaches most of the time. Uh, the, the hard part is the, the – programs that have fallen on harder times yeah. it's hard to find that that passionate guy that played and, and uh went to state or won a district or division um, but that is it i mean you really gotta you know when, when you're running a post and you're looking for a coach the coach is the number one choice um it's just like a teacher in, in a building and the most important job i do as a principal is hire well yeah. uh, nothing else matters in my opinion i mean obviously a lot matters but uh my number one task is to hire well and i really put a lot into the interview process and it is concerning and to get off topic here a little bit the lack of people going in education um and there's various reasons for that but uh you got to have applicants and, and passionate people uh you got to have good teachers to to get results in school and you got to have a good coach to get results so but that yeah finding the right person is key and then uh staying with the times yeah. it can be done though every town every town has good baseball people you just got to yes. dig them, dig them up. And, and like you said, I like where your head's at too. getting that young 25 year old. That's two years out of college uh, to scratch that itch again and give back uh, for all the people that gave, gave to, to him. Hopefully he's willing to give back. Absolutely. And I would, I would encourage coaches, you know, start that if you're starting or working towards your program or you're in a program, don't let those things go because you're, you know, uh, at some point, you know, Jason, you're, you're, you know, you will retire, whether you keep coaching, how you want to do whatnot, that's a decision you make, but do you have, do you have that succession or in place? Is there somebody there that, you know, how do we do that? And I think you have to think about those things in any program, 
How do you keep yeah. bringing those people back? Keep the program. We need junior. How do we get to the you know the 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 junior junior the twelve and thirteen year olds that are coming up that we can continue yeah. to grow this program? Yeah, the the word at uh, my school and uh, our program is often tradition, and uh, we have the 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 word tradition all around my high school, and it says something. It, you know, there's a lot of meaning underneath that word that and people know it, and that comes from uh, you know the assistant coach taking notes and, and continuing those traditions. And I get to hear uh, about our come out song on this uh, for our high school basketball program. It's been the same song for 40 some years. And people, some people are like, Oh, we got to get rid of that song. I'm like, I'm not dying on that Hill. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people that show up for a seven thirty game in their eighties and their seventies to hear that song. And they feel pretty darn good about their day. So, but tradition and, and, and keeping, keeping the traditions alive, keeping people coming back for more, it, that is definitely the key. And, and, you know, you can take that to the birds on the bat. You know, I was hearing that about the city connect jerseys today on the way home. I didn't really get the whole story, but I sounds like the city connect jerseys. There was an effort to not have the birds on the bat on it. Those jerseys are quite unique. And I don't know the whole story. I missed it, yeah. but. Sounds like the DeWitts put up quite a fight to maybe get it on the jersey, but I don't know. I, I, I'm real intrigued now to, to see what yeah. they pulled off for the Cardinals. Ooh, that bird's wow. on the bat means a lot. That means tradition too. It's like those Yankee right. pinstripes. Right. Oh, and that's – see, that's me. I'm, I grew up a Dodger fan. I, I do not like pinstripes. I never want to wear <laughs> right. a uniform with fair. pinstripes. <laughs> fair, fair. There you go. I, I, it's, it's, it's community. It's about the community. And I think that's what Legion still represents a lot. And I think it's a great, great thought process, the community around. I got one more thing for you here. You guys lost, uh, the inaugural. Well, I don't, it's not really the inaugural. I can't say it's inaugural because that'd been happening before. Yeah. It happened in the past. Yeah. And my nephew, cause we, we live streamed that game. And uh, my nephew called that game with me. He's a Baldwin uh, 611 alum from District 10. So you're probably very aware of that. And uh, he said he's played in those all-star games back when it was just District 10 going against some Illinois all-stars. Is that correct? Uh, that, uh, I, I know it was played back when I played, we didn't have it. We had a local Illinois. So I missed somewhere between, uh, probably during my college years, they might've done that, but I missed that era when I was out of Legion for about eight, set, seven, eight, nine years. But, uh, I'm glad we brought it back. And, uh, I, you know, it's going to be nice this year. I, I, I like and dislike things about it being early in the season. I think it's, uh, June 23rd last year. It was early August. And, I, you know, we had we were missing two of our team that won state and our team that got second. So our top two teams qualified. So I was missing a couple of my big guns. And I know Missouri was missing one of their teams. So yeah. I like to think that uh, we would have won if we'd have had uh, one more team. In fact, I'm pretty confident of that. But it was a great event. It was a great game. It couldn't have been uh, other than us losing by one. It couldn't have been much better. It was a nice, tight game. And uh, I certainly it was fun meeting players from all around the state, seeing their eyes when they uh, got in that dugout and, and all the feels. It was it was really a wonderful experience. And um, I'm, I know a lot of I actually have had uh, two teams tell me one of the main reasons they started a program was following that, that the kids want to be part of that Bush Stadium. They, they really want to fight for that and be on that team. And um, I'm pretty excited to hear that, that that that. The things we're doing to promote Legion, uh, albeit just a, a game just like you play in Aviston or wherever, uh, same game, same rules, but uh, a bigger stage. And, and uh, so I'm excited that uh, the kids are excited about that. It, it, it is exciting to play on, on Bush Stadium. Yeah, some of those conversations, you know, where, do all the kids get to play? I said, heck, man, I just want to be in the dugout. I was shocked. My daughter, my daughter wanted to be in the dugout. My daughter, I have a son who obviously plays college baseball. My daughter is into reading books. I got the best of both worlds. She's her her knees are not going to hurt when she's old. Her eyes are going to hurt 
she's a reader. She's an achiever in different ways. She wanted to be in that dugout with dad. I was shocked about that. And uh, that, that just goes to show you the power of playing on a major league field. Uh, if my daughter, Aubrey Rockers, gets excited about that, you know uh, baseball players, are it, it's something to push for. So we're excited that we're going to keep that going. I, yeah. I appreciate the commissioners of both states making that a priority. And I hope we can keep getting some more fresh ideas. Uh, you know, anyone that's on Twitter, uh, if you have fresh ideas, send them to Illinois Twitter, uh, Illinois Legion Baseball, and, or Missouri Legion Baseball. We're, we're always looking for ways to uh, promote promote uh, what we're doing and make I, things better. Grow with the future. I dig it. I like it. I like it. Well, Absolutely. hey, you know, it was a heck of a baseball game. I enjoyed calling that baseball game. There was some dudes pitching well. There was some guys, uh, you know, a uh, hit or two there, some big plays. It was a well-played baseball game, and that's what I'm saying. You know, <laughs> you can see good baseball anywhere. Well, that was the thing we, we learned after year one. We, we were we – were, I was on the team with you uh, deciding how we were going to go about it. Well, I, I, you know, about the third inning of that game, I'm like, we probably should have played nine innings because <laughs> these – these pitchers aren't going to give up many hits. They were. Now, there, there, was, there were some BBs being thrown, and, and there'll be some BBs being thrown this year. So we're, uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to play nine this summer because, uh, you know, runs are harder to come by when you've got – But I mean, there's dudes in the box too, but when you have dudes on the mound, they usually win more than the, the dudes in the batter's box. It's just how baseball is. So, uh, But, no, that was what was cool about it. It wasn't – it was uh, – I felt bad. You know, a lot of guys only got one at bat for our team, but that's just the tip of the cap to the pitchers at Missouri. And uh, I know we had pitchers equal to the task and hitters equal to the task. We, you know, I think the score was about four to three. Yeah, heck, yeah. A heck of a ball game. Hey, and yeah, we were too. honestly, we were, we were both hoping for that. You know, the worst case scenario would have been a, a 20 to three game. And I didn't see that happening, but you just never know. Anything's yeah. possible. Exactly. No, <laughs> it was, it was just the perfect scenario. It was a great day. A lot of fans in the stands. I really appreciate all the folks coming out supporting mm -hmm. Legion Baseball. It was really just a, a fun event, and uh, I'm glad it happened. And we're looking forward. We're going to do it again. We're going to live stream it again this year, and uh, awesome. we're looking forward to it, man. Really are. Great. Well, we appreciate you doing that. If appreciate you, that, uh, and if you got some players over there, Jason, we always do our player spotlights around. Uh, we're trying to get more into the Illinois side and those, those things. We love to we love talking to players, and uh, always yeah. love spotlighting players. So if there's any guys that you know, um, always they they can't freeze up on on when the camera's in the face though. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, they're new to that. It's all good. I probably have a few that won't freeze up on you. They, you they, they, you might want it to freeze up. <laughs> but, oh, uh, you man. looking for legion, legion players or college players? Uh, either or. Either or. Well, I know college player or two. Uh, we got a lot of them playing college ball all around Illinois and Missouri. Absolutely. So you just send me an email. I'll tell me what you want now. Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. We'll make it happen. We'll do, man. We'll do. Uh, Jason Rockers, folks. I got his name right the second time. And, uh, That's pretty from, good. Uh-oh. Uh Aviston. A. This guy's good. Aviston, Quick learner. Illinois. We, right. I, I, I That's hate what we just, people's names. <laughs> That's all right. We, we've only won one state championship, but we win a few more. You'll, you won't have any choice but to remember it. That's correct. So we got to give you a reason to remember it. If I'd have got a few more hits in the minors, you'd know how to say my last name, too. That was my own fault. <laughs> I like it. Well, hey, that's probably true. I'm, you know, I mean, yeah, that's, that's just true. the way it's it true. is. Yeah, you don't butcher Ryan Howard's name, do you, or David Freeze? No, no. Get those ones. No. no. no they, everybody <laughs> knows them, right? Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> well, hey, again, folks, Jason Rockers, if you're looking for some Legion baseball on the Illinois side, if you're in that area, go check it out. If you're not in the area, go check out. Find out where Legion Baseball is. Go do it. Um, I don't think you'll be disappointed. So, there you go. I appreciate your time tonight, Jason. I really you bet. do. You bet. I appreciate your your efforts for Legion Baseball as well over there on the, the most side. We're having you're fun doing great with things. it. We're having fun with it, Absolutely. folks. Absolutely. 
Thanks for tuning in to some Legion Baseball Talk. We're going to have more. We got more coaches coming up. We got some stuff. So make sure you hit that subscribe button down there. Hit the dinger next to it because, you know, there you go. If you want a Midwest Timber bat, there you go. <laughs> He's plugging. <laughs> plugging the plug in the bat company. Check out Midwest Timber on uh, TikTok, Instagram, all, all the socials. <laughs> make, you, make you a wood bat. Uh, there you go, baby. That's what it works. And uh, that dinger will get you all your notifications for upcoming episodes, such as the Midwest Timber Classic here. <laughs> there you go and uh folks we'll uh <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm done there you go i i messed it all up anyway hey subscribe hit the dinger notifications thanks for tuning in everybody have a great day in the lord all you pitchers keep throwing strikes and hitters jason you got some uh advice for hitters i'm sure right swing of strikes that's good advice. That's good advice. Keep your head still. My best advice is keep your eyes still. Don't be. That's my best advice. We're moving that head so much. We'll see you my, my son's a pitcher. My son's a pitcher right now at the collegiate level, so I'm not going to share too many tips. He needs to get people out tomorrow. Uh, we'll see you all next time.